Hey everybody, welcome to Good Movies and Music. My name's AJ. So this is a brand new channel and one of the reasons I wanted to start a YouTube channel is because, well two reasons. One, because I want to share the movies and music that I love that have been important to me. But two, I also want to use this as a way to kind of force myself to discover new movies and music. I'm in my 30s now and I can already start to feel the creep of that older man entrenched attitude of like, music back in my day was so much better. They don't make music like they did during my generation and I don't want to be that guy at all. So um, I think it's important to just keep up with new music and that's what I'm going to use this channel for is a vehicle to discover new music. Um, I was sitting around thinking, well, how can I find new music? What's a good sort of way to jump into this project? I mean, music is just such a huge world, right? There's so many genres, there's so many, you know, levels to it as far as like uh, independent artists and independent labels and major labels and, you know, it's just, where do you start? So I was thinking, um, what about just starting with last year's most highly rated albums? Um, the problem with that, of course, is Am I going to go to one publication's list and use their, you know, top 10 or top 20 list? You know, the issue with that is, well, I'm letting them be the sort of gatekeeper or the tastemaker. I mean, naturally, every publication comes with its own point of view. And that's in terms of, you know, what is good music, but also what music is even worth listening to. Um, not every publication reviews every album, right? So the solution I came up with, and I'm not saying it's a perfect one, but it's the best one I could think of, was to just go on Metacritic and... The thing that's nice about that is that it sort of compiles reviews and gives you an average score. So I feel like that'll at least sort of mitigate the idea that if I'm relying on one publication, I might miss out on something. I feel like if you have 10 different publications reviewing an album and they all say it's great, then maybe that's a worthwhile pursuit. So I told myself I was going to review the top 10 albums as rated on Metacritic um, of last year. And then of course I immediately ran into an issue with that approach, which was that there were more than 10 albums that shared similar scores. If you can see here, I'm scrolling, we got number 12, 89, 11, 89, all the way up to 8, 89. Um, it felt arbitrary to do the top 10 if, you know, five of these albums all had the exact same score. So we're going to do 12 albums. It's the top 12 albums as rated on Metacritic for 2020. And at number 12, we're starting with We're New Again, a Reimagining by Micaiah McRaven by Gil Scott Heron. So it looks like we have an 89 for the Metacritic score and a 8.0 for the user score. And of course you can't always take it for granted that the user score and the critic score are going to be closely aligned. Sometimes they're wildly different. So it's interesting. It's a, I think it's a good sign that they're pretty much even on this. So it says here that this is the final release of Gil Scott Heron as reimagined by Makai McCraven. Now I know of Gil Scott Heron. Um, I know him mostly as a spoken word artist. I know he's famous for his composition, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Beyond that, I'm not too familiar with his music, unfortunately. So it says here that McCraven is an American jazz drummer and band leader. I have a confession to make. While jazz music has about a hundred year history at this point, you can pretty much narrow down my taste in jazz from like around 1955 to about 1965. Some of my favorite jazz artists are Charles Mingus, Dexter Gordon, Dave Brubeck, of course Miles and Coltrane as well, but for me it's early Miles and early Coltrane. But beyond that, I feel like maybe I just don't have the technical music knowledge to really appreciate the stuff that they were doing later on in their careers. So back to the album. Uh, just a little bit more info here. Uh, samples from Agnes Zimondi and the Stephen McCraven Quartet. Ooh, okay. Same last name. I'm guessing this is a relative. Where are we? There we are. Stephen and... Yeah, okay. So that's cool. He is sampling music from his parents. Man, I love that, that's great. You love to see that family lineage. And this album is from XL Recordings, which first thing that comes to mind is I know they've released a bunch of Radiohead albums, so the eclectic taste for that music label. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good overview. It gives me an idea of what I'm in for, but it really still leaves it wide open. I have no idea what to expect, but um, I'm excited, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and start with the album. We're new again, a reimagining by Makai McCraven. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name, sir. Let's go. So I wonder if this is gonna be mostly a spoken word. I did not become someone different. That I did not want to be. But I'm new here. Will you show me around? Okay. So 
nice groove there. I like that. That harp. That's angelic. Okay, I like this, yeah. Feeling a melancholy to this, but also some uplift to it, you know? He has such a great voice, just so rich. You can hear his life in his voice. It's kind of speechless. I mean, I know I should be saying more, but that's just serene. That's just put me in this like really pleasant trance. Even though it had kind of a melancholy feel to it, there's definitely like a little sadness kind of underneath that song, but um, it still just had a really peaceful vibe to it. Uh, that was, it's a good, good start to an album. Because I always feel like running. Okay. Not a way, because there's no such place. Because if there was, I would have found it by now, as in running out of time. This music has a very, like, uh, early 90s hip-hop vibe to it. Because running makes me look like everyone else, though I hope there will never be cause for that. So I knew where a cover was. Like, I know it's live instrumentation, but you could hear something being produced like this. That would have come out from the West Coast in, like, the early half of the 90s. That bass is really interesting. Feels like everything else is just kind of holding it down and that bass gets to kind of go off a little bit. A lot of these tracks are really short and Got it, got it. Did I got 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 <laughs> nice. I really like this. I really, despite not really being too knowledgeable about like experimental jazz, I do really love music when it gets really like discordant like that and just cacophonous like that. It reminds me of King Crimson at the end of 21st Century Schizoid Man where it just kind of all just builds to this really loud cacophony of instrumentation. That's kind of the same vibe. That sax is real faint in there, but I love what it's doing. I'm also a big fan of the Mars Volta, and I think from listening to them, I just grew to love and appreciate when saxophone just plays with a really frenetic, almost frantic pace to it. You know, it's almost searching with just like this really intense feel to it. So one thing I forgot to mention in my intro, which I already knew, was that Gil Scott Heron passed um, maybe 10 years ago, I think. And so I'm wondering what it was like for McRaven to compose around these pre-recorded takes and not really get to collaborate with them on this album, but to kind of create something new, just having these vocal takes. So I'm a very visual person and when I listen to music, one of the things I love about music is kind of the visuals that it gives me. Um, just almost creating a music video for the song in my head. 
And I just listened to this, and this is such a strong vibe and such a strong personality to it. Like, it just puts me, like, in a big city at night, like maybe L.A., just driving through L.A. at night. Um, yeah, it's just such vivid music. Long ago, the clock washed midnight away, bringing the dawn Oh, God, I must be dreaming. Time to get up again and time to start up again. Putting on my socks now. <laughs> Should have been asleep when I was sitting there drinking beer and trying to start another letter to you. Don't know how many times I didn't write again last night. This might be my favorite track so far in terms of how the music is kind of Should playing with and playing around the vocal delivery. So I wouldn't be up by myself. Where did the night go? Should go to sleep now and say, yeah, we'll fuck it out of money. Spend it all on my life. That's interesting sound design. Can't get past. Dear baby, how are you? Okay. Oh, what that flute's doing. A sense of soul and self, that African sense. And she raised me like she raised four of her own. And I was hurt and scared and shocked when they just got up suddenly one night. And they sent a limousine from heaven to take her to God and his one. Yeah, the two prevailing moods on this album for me so far are serenity and melancholy. And you can forget how closely those two are aligned a lot of the time. If they're not competing vibes, they're very complementary on this album for sure. Like a sad, quiet piece, you know? Resignation. Ooh. That boom bap early 90s hip hop influence is so present in this, and I don't hate it. Love it, that little hi hat, the little hi hat flourish there. That's It sounds like it was just kind of recorded behind the scenes, right? That wasn't like... He didn't get in the studio and say that into the mic. That was just like some behind the scenes. Is it just me or did the past few tracks just kind of take a more funky turn? It 
it's interesting how the vocals are used in this whole album. Like, there's some tracks where clearly the monologue or the, the poem that's being read is front and center, and it's the point of the song in a lot of ways. But then there's other songs where his voice is just kind of almost a rhythm instrument, where it's just kind of in the mix, and it's really, you know, keeping the proceedings moving, and it sounds great, but you're almost not even really hearing what he's saying so much that it's, it's just like it's helping to create the vibe, you know? boom bap influence again that I was talking about I mean I'm a 90s kid this is just what hip hop is to me you know like I could have imagined Dayla rhyming over this it's a very blues singer delivery it just blends so well with this hip hop influence production. That voice. Just love the blues vibe that he's bringing to this one. So many different genres on this song, just all blending seamlessly. It's kind of winding down there. That was an interesting album to do as my first in this series of the top 12 albums of 2020. I like how every track kind of had something different to offer in terms of where it was coming from. Like I said, there was some tracks that were more musically focused, while there were others where it was more about what he was saying. It was more about the poem that was being read or the monologue that was being delivered. This album, since it's a reimagining by another artist who wasn't there for the original recording sessions, I feel like it did a good job of preserving Gil Scott Heron's voice and making sure he was front center while also just doing some really creative, really fun and interesting things with the music that was under his voice. 
Now, if I had to list my favorite tracks on this album, and in no particular order, but I really liked Where Did the Night Go. I thought it was really playful. The flute in the background was just doing some really cool stuff, kind of playing around his voice. It was a really memorable instrumental, and his vocal delivery. The whole thing just kind of had this really trippy, fever dream sort of energy to it, and I really loved it. I also really liked the track I'll Take Care of You. It was probably one of the more hip-hop influenced songs on this album. It had a great piano line under it, and it just had this what I, I feel like was kind of a big touchstone of this album, which was these two kind of complementary vibes of, on the one hand, kind of a sadness or a melancholy, but then also just like a peace and a serenity. And I thought that was kind of the overall vibe of this album, was that it just did a really good job of creating this very specific mood, like this rainy day in a big city, looking out your window type of vibe, like life is out there, but it almost kind of feels like it's at a standstill, and it's just you with your thoughts, and it's, you know, it's an overcast day, that type of that type of energy. And then the last song that I definitely have to talk about is Guided, Broken Home Part 4. Man, that song, I don't it just kind of came out of nowhere, it just hit me. Like, I don't know if it was when he started talking about like the idea of like this isn't gonna be a cliched song about a strong black woman. You know, you just have to be you know, the weak the weak don't survive. So he said something like that. That just hit me right away. I mean, I was I was just thinking about my mom and like how I was raised by a strong Chicana woman, you know, she didn't, she, she, she really had to, you know, fight for everything that she's had in life and, you know, she has a really take no shit attitude, you know, and she, she's a great woman, she's a strong woman, so I think it's just, you know, part of this whole thing being in this pandemic right now, you, we just don't get to see family as often as we do and it just, it really makes you think about the people in your life who you wish you could see more, you know, and it's just like, yeah, I, I this that line just really just like was a gut punch that I wasn't expecting. But yeah, I don't have much more to say about that song other than just it was the most emotionally resonant for me. And for that reason, it's probably my favorite track on the album. And I really don't know if I should like, should I be scoring these albums? Should I be scoring each track individually? Should I be stopping after every track and, you know, kind of summing up what my thoughts were on that track after I finish it? Um, it's all just kind of like a work in progress, you know, it's just, it's going to be trial and error. I'm going to see what works and what doesn't, what feels right and what doesn't. Um, I welcome your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. What do you like in a review? What sort of things do you want to see in a reaction? I mean, I can think of some YouTubers that I'm a fan of who do great work and they have good ideas, but I don't want to just take those ideas. I don't want to be too derivative of anybody else. I'd, I want to find my own voice with this. So. Um, you might see some influence in terms of some other YouTubers um, in my early work, and that's natural. But I would like to kind of sort of evolve and build my own thing. Um, but yeah, but just I am totally open to suggestions and comments, critiques, any of it. Um, yeah, let me know. Um, other than that, thanks for watching this video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you can get notifications. Good movies and music. My name's AJ. Thank you for watching and have a good day.